and we're back. Let's keep going with our chapter five video lecture focus on receivables. So notice that in our previous transaction on the 15,000 we loaned out and the interest earned was $900. We earned interest of 150 in year one, which for the last two months of the year, we earned interest of 750 in year two for the first 10 months of the year. Total interest revenue was $900, but the entire amount of cash collected by the interest when the loan mature in year two, the total amount of cash collected was $900. So notice that with the accrual accounting system, you recognize revenue when it is earned, not when cash is received. Next up, how to account for credit card sales and how do they impact the financial statement? Okay, so we know that we like to shop, right? And often people shop using credit cards. But did you all know that when you go to your favorite store and you use a credit card, then the merchant who was at the credit card, let's say if you go to Nordstrom's, and you use a Visa credit card that's not from Nordstrom, then Nordstrom has to pay a fee to the credit card company for accepting that credit card as a form of payment. That fee can range from 2% up to 8%. So have you ever went to a place before and tried to use your American Express card and they did not accept the credit card? That's because American Express charges a higher rate to the merchant for using that credit card. So some merchants would not accept a American Express as a form of payment. But let's see how that works. Let's say that the tutor service accepts a credit card for payment. The amount was for $1,000. Now the credit card company is charging them a 5% fee, which means 5% of that $1,000 or dollars is the actual fee being charged by the credit card company for the use of that credit card. All right. So to record this transaction, the company ATS, the tutor service, has a account C before at 950. That's the amount they're going to receive in a credit card company less the fee of $50. Now that fee of $50 is shown as an expense. Let me go back. It's shown as an expense on the income statement for the tutoring service company. Okay. Now when the money comes in from the credit card company, it's going to increase their cash account and decrease account receivable. Now I heard you saying, if there's a fee, why would they accept credit cards? Well, because most people do not pay cash up front. They use credit cards in order to pay for their goods and services. So if you don't accept credit cards, you're going to limit yourself in terms of customers. Our last topic focus on different inventory cost flow methods, call specific identification, FIFO, LIFO, and the weighted average approach. We'll see what, what, what are these and how are they going to impact the financial statement. To teach this concept, let's look at a sample company. We have a company called Mountain Bike Company. All right. This company purchased a helmet, a Mile 2 1 helmet at a cost of $100. Then they bought a second helmet at a cost of $110. Because as you all know, prices fluctuate. The price you paid yesterday could be different than the price you paid for it a month ago. Now, if they sell one helmet to a customer, should it record cost of goods sold at $100 or $110? Well, it depends on how they determine the cost of the good that was sold. 
that they used was known as Specific Identification, FIFO, which stands for First In, First Out, LIFO, which stands for Last In, First Out, or was called as the Weighted Average Approach. Okay? Let's assume that the company tagged inventory so they know the exact cost of each item. When that's done, that's known as specific identification. This is when a company knows the exact cost of every item they purchased and for every item that was sold. That's known as specific identification. With that being the case, if they sold the first item, cost of goods sold would be $100. If they sold the second item, cost of goods sold would be $110. Because now we're saying we know the exact cost of the item that was sold. Okay, that's fine. But when companies have low price, high turnover goods, the record keep necessary to use that approach isn't it practical. So think about a company that's selling a bunch of markers, ink pens that may be loose. They don't know the exact cost they pay for each of those items. And it doesn't make sense uh, from a time perspective to try to keep track of the exact cost of each of those lower price items. So when that's the case, they can use what we call one of these cost flow methods known as FIFO, LIFO, or the weighted average approach. Okay? Let's begin with FIFO. FIFO says first in, first out. With the FIFO cost flow method, we're going to assume whatever I only purchased first was sold first. So if I sold one item on the FIFO, we're going to assume we sold the first item, cost of goods sold would equal $100. Okay? LIFO is the opposite. LIFO says last in, first out. Last in, first out. Under the LIFO call flow method, we're going to assume whatever we purchased last was sold first. Therefore, on the life for your cost of goods sold would be 110 because that was the cost for the second item. Okay? With the weighted average cost flow method, we determine what is the average cost per unit. First, compute your average cost per unit. So we purchased two items, one for 100, one for 110. That total cost was $210. Divide that by two, your average cost is $105 per unit. So since when you sell one unit, on the way to average approach, your cost of goods sold would be $105. So when we cannot identify the exact cost of each item that was sold, we can use a cost flow method such as FIFO, LIFO, or the weighted average approach. Now, let's be clear. That discussion of using FIFO, LIFO, weighted, weighted average, or uh, weighted average cost approach, it only pertains to your accounting records, not the physical flow of goods. Companies will always sell their older items first, and then their newer items. So from a physical flow, companies always use FIFO. However, but from a record keeping perspective, they can use FIFO, LIFO, or the average cost approach. So for a point of clarity, physical inventory is always under FIFO, first in, first out. But for record keeping, we can use the FIFO method LIFO method or the average cost approach. Okay? Now, notice that your sales price doesn't change depending on which method you choose. Your cost of goods sold is going to be different, which gives us a different gross margin. Now, notice, same company, same transactions, just different ways to compute their cost 
of good soap. So contingent upon which method that was used, it did give them a different cost of good soap, which in terms gives them a different amount for their gross margin. Interesting, right? Okay. It also impacts their ending inventory. This is showing the balance for an inventory under FIFO, LIFO, or the weighted average approach. Okay? Now, let's take a look at a transaction that has more layers. The previous transaction only had two items. One cost 100, the other cost 110. But let's take a look at the inventory for erasers bikes. Uh-huh. So now we have a total of 55 bikes. There are 10 bikes in the inventory. We purchased 20 bikes on March 18th at 220 per bike. And we purchased 25 bikes on August 21st at 250 per bike. So there was a total of 55 bikes available for sale. That total cost was $12,650. Now, you should pause this video and write down this information because you're going to need it to do the next set of calculations. Okay? So, again, pause the video and write down this information to keep track of these numbers. Okay. Now, let's assume that we sold 43 bikes. At a cash price of three fifty each, so to get your sales, you would take forty three times the three fifty to recognize your sales revenue. Okay. Now our focus now is going to be on how to compute our cost of goods sold using FIFO, LIFO, and the average cost approach. Okay. Now FIFO says. First in, first out. You sold a total of 43 bikes. Under FIFO, which 43 bikes did we sell? Well, we sold those first 10 bikes from beginning inventory. Then we sold those 20 purchased on March 18th. And then we sold 13 of those bikes, of those bikes, of those bikes. Purchase on August 21st, add those amounts together, time their respective costs, total cost of goods sold under FIFO, $9,650. Now remember from your chart, there were 55 bikes in total, right? We sold 43 bikes. We still have 12 bikes remaining, which makes up your ending inventory. If I subtract what was sold from what was available, that gives me the value of my inventory, which is going to be $3,000. Okay? When you add your cost of goods sold plus any inventory, it must always equal your cost of goods available for sale. Again, when you add your inventory, plus your cost of goods sold, these two together must always equal your cost of goods available for sale. Okay? Now, I put it on here again, just in case you don't write it down. Next time, we're going to do LIFO. LIFO says last in, first out. LIFO says last in, first out. Under the LIFO call flow, so we're going to assume whatever we purchased last was sold first under the LIFO call flow assumption. Now, you ready to do the calculations? Okay, but guess what? I'm going to stop this video, let you all do the actual work, and then we're going to come back and look at our LIFO calculations and the average cost calculations. Okay? All right.